Hello and welcome to a new course in Blender. This course will be for architects and architecture students who are interested to learn how to model their designs in Blender. I'm Raymond Gabriel and I've started this channel with a course on how to create a minion character in Blender from start to finish. If you are interested in animation more than you are in architecture, you can check that out from here. In this course, we will explore how to create an architectural design for a summer house. The design is by an amazing artist I found on Behance. The original design link will be in the description if you'd like to check that out. We will be recreating her design using Blender and we will start the modeling process and continue on with the textures and then start populating the scene with elements and furniture using Blender Kit and other resources. In this video, we will be preparing the CAD lines of the house, import them in Blender and start the modeling process. I really hope you find this course useful. You can join my Patreon page where you will get access to all the project files of my previous tutorials and also the final textured model for this house. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share this content so it can reach and help more people learn Blender. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get started. I will be using NanoCAD to export my CAD lines. It's a free software that almost exactly works as AutoCAD with a few little differences. If you don't have that, you can download it from a link in the description below. You will also find a link to download this CAD file. I will also be trying to let you know how to do the same steps in AutoCAD if you have that already. We will be exporting out those lines to DXF format which is importable in Blender. I can press the scroll mouse button to pan the view and by scrolling I can zoom in and out and by using the left mouse button I will select the different lines. If you press here you will see all the created layers. Let's start with the wall layer. Select one of the wall layer, which is the white lines. You will see here we have the wall layer selected. Now press here on this button, which is the select similar button. You will find that it's giving us an option down here. Just press space to confirm. You will see that all the wall layer lines are now selected. If you are using AutoCAD, you can select similar by just right clicking and selecting the option select similar. Okay, now that we have the wall layer selected, Let's export it out. Press file and choose export. You'll see this window. Choose where you want to save your DXF file and make sure to check this box so that it only export the selected lines and not the whole file. Now you can press save. In AutoCAD, use the command DXF out. It will get you a window like this. Around here, you'll find tools. Click it, then choose options. And then in the DXF options, check select objects, then press OK. Click save and then choose the line, right click, select similar and confirm by pressing space. Apologies for not showing you the steps because I don't have AutoCAD myself, as I recently migrated all my work to NanoCAD. Perfect, now we have the wall layer exported and ready to be used. Let's move on to another layer. As you can see, we still have the front steps layer, the slab layer, and the L-shaped structure layer. Let's export out the front steps. It's the same thing as before. Select one of the yellow lines by left clicking. You might get this pop-up window. This is just to confirm which layer do you want as there are multiple layers in the same place. Just choose the yellow one. Okay, now as we did before, press select similar, then press space. And again, press file, export, and save it in the same place. The last layer I will be exporting in this lecture is the L-shaped structure layer and I will leave you to export out the slab layer after that on your own so you can practice the steps. Ok, select the red line here, now press select similar, then space to confirm, then I'll export it out again in a separate DXF file. If you are wondering what are the dashed red lines here, they are part of the same structure that we will be modeling later. We only need this small part and we will model the rest from it in Blender. Go ahead and export out the slab layer using the same steps. You should now have all these DXF files. Let's start up Blender. Press A, then press X to delete all the default objects. To import a DXF file in Blender, you first need to enable an add-on. From here, press Edit and choose Preferences. And then in the Add-ons tab, 
search here for DXF. You will find these two add-ons for exporting and importing DXF. Check the import DXF add-on, then click save preferences. Close this window. Now if you go to file and hover over the import menu, you will find now we have the AutoCAD DXF option. Click it and then go to where you saved the DXF file. Choose the wall DXF, then press import. Select the imported plan from here, then press the period key on your numpad to focus the view on the selected plan. Or if you don't have a numpad, from view, choose frame selected. Make sure you still have the plan selected, then press tab to go to edit mode. You will notice that all the lines are in fact imported as curves. As you can see here in this tab, the layer was automatically renamed to wall curve and you will see the curve symbol right here. We will not be able to use it like that and we will have to convert it to a mesh. This is very easy to do, just press tab to go back to object mode, right click and choose convert to mesh. Now you will notice that the curve symbol has changed to the mesh symbol. We will now be able to go to edit mode and start extruding up those lines creating the walls. Press tab to go to edit mode. Before extruding up those lines, let's make sure that all the vertices are merged together. Press A to select all the lines, then press M for the merge menu and choose by distance. You will see that there are 18 vertices removed. Now we can press E to extrude up the lines. Let's lock it on the Z axis by pressing Z, then write down on your keyboard 2.8 so that the wall's height become exactly 2.8 meters. Then press enter to confirm. Let's fill up the top and bottom gaps in the walls. Make sure you still have only the top line selected. If you have deselected them by mistake, you can reselect it by going to wireframe mode from up here or press Z to get these four modes like that and choose wireframe. I will be using this shortcut a lot during this course to switch between the four different modes available, solid, wireframe, material preview and render mode. Right now we are in wireframe which is the best mode to select a part of your model as it will let you select the vertices that might not be visible in the solid view. Rotate the view with your scroll mouse button to get a side view like that. Now press B for box select, then click with your left mouse button, hold it and drag it to select the top vertices of the plan. Ok, now that we have the top vertices selected, press Alt plus F to fill the gaps. We would normally just press F to fill these gaps, but if I undo the last step and press the F, you will see that parts of the plan are filled incorrectly, so to avoid that, we will use the shortcut Alt plus F instead. Ok, that has filled in the gaps, but as you can see, there are now new edges created diagonally. It will not really affect us, but for the sake of having a clean model, let's remove them by pressing X and choose the option Limited Dissolve. This option removes all the lines that are not contributing to the overall shape of the model, so it has removed all the unnecessary diagonal lines. Let's do the same steps for the bottom gaps in the wall. While you are in wireframe, go to the side view, press B for box select and select the bottom vertices. Alright, now press Alt plus F to fill the gaps, then press X, then choose Limited Dissolve. That concludes this lecture. In the next lecture, we will continue importing the slab DXF file and start placing the floor plans on top of each other. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified as soon as new videos get uploaded. Till then, you can check out more of my other tutorials from these links.